It's a mild end to what has been a very mild winter across the UK and across much of Europe. Thanks for clicking on to Bogan's European Outlook. The final day of meteorological winter and uh, we are about to embark on a new season, of course. Meteorological spring begins tomorrow and it is neither here nor there. We do have a frontal system to contend with, but it's nothing particularly cold, nothing particularly warm, wet, windy, stormy. Um, it is a rather kind of kind of end to what has been a disappointing winter. That's for sure, both on on my part as well as many many people's part as well. But uh, we move onwards and upwards, and we look at the Madden Julian oscillation that is now starting to become more active. We are seeing it progressing uh, out of the Indian Ocean into the um, continental maritime area. And uh, why do we look at the Madden Julian Oscillation anyway? It's away down thousands of miles away within the tropics. Well, it can have a major impact on the global weather system, especially once it starts to become more active and we start to see the increase in uh, thunderstorm activity, um, you know, progressing eastwards through the tropical belt. That starts to have an impact uh, you know, further north and even further south over the uh, global system. So you can see here, this is off the, the GFS, uh, the forecast for the um, increase in convective energy, upward motion through the continental maritime region. It looks as if that's going to progress into the western portion of the Pacific over the next couple of weeks. And it's interesting when we look at this in particular and then look at some of the computer modeling it does indicate some rather interesting uh, alterations in the pattern uh, over the northern hemisphere as well. So I want to look at the GFS here because um, you can see here a general uh, negative height field. Yes, arguably kind of 50-50, but uh, generally speaking, it has been, and certainly over the last um, you know four weeks or so, it has been a pattern very much dominated by low pressure within the arctic high pressure within the middle altitude region and strong westerly winds of course uh, bringing all the stormy weather but also bringing um, a very very um, atlantic driven influence to europe keeping um, temperatures well above average and it will be interesting to see exactly how mild this february becomes so Factoring in Madden Julian Oscillation and the impacts it's having on the atmosphere from the tropics northwards towards the pole, you can see here that the modeling indicates a buildup of pressure. Now, we still have the positive North Atlantic Oscillation signal. That, of course, means the trough over the North Atlantic, the ridge over the Azores, um, but we'll have systems um, kind of getting deflected up towards Iceland. Now, we've weakened the North Atlantic jet stream Therefore, we've got uh, more in the way of high pressure within our region of the world at this moment in time. We still have frontal systems influencing the UK. You know, today, we're going to have the same tomorrow. We're going to have more of that over the next day, uh, you know, the next several days as well. We do have high pressure building in from the southwest, but it is going to eventually be interrupted midweek by more frontal systems. But looking at the big picture, folks, that is what is interesting because we start to see the buildup of high pressure over Scandinavia, that could have a significance in terms of bringing some, uh, you know, albeit temporary easterly winds, colder conditions. Generally, over the, the next couple of weeks, there's strong indication that the temperatures are average, uh, or thereabouts anyway, over, over the next uh, couple of weeks. But you can see the general emphasis being on um, the red starting to reappear over the Arctic region once again. And this could be could be wrong, but this could be an influence of the Madden Julian Oscillation uh, progressing from the Indian Ocean into the Western Pacific here. And we'll start to see more in the way of blocking coming back in. Now, we still have a very prominent uh, trough over the North Atlantic here. So you can see that as I play through the GFS run. But that being said, there is, a, you know, there is indications here with the model that, that we're starting to see a kind of slosh effect of the high over Europe, over Greenland, there is um, a connection taking place here. And then if we can start to see these areas of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, it starts to kind of push 
the ridge over the UK, over Europe, northwards here. And eventually what we may start to see is an undercutting of the trough and the buildup of pressure over Greenland here as we push towards the middle portion of uh, of March here. So it's going to be worth keeping our eyes on this, folks, because that uh, certainly could start to indicate that we start to deflect the, the storm track further south. We start to see colder conditions starting to develop here. I have made the call already on YouTube here that it could be talking about a cooler March. There is still a lot of reason to be uncertain about that call and i'm not necessarily going full bore and saying it's going to be a cold march because there is always flies in the ointment we've seen that you know a classic example being this winter overall but there is certainly some very interesting things going on with regards to the increased block and further north can we start to break down this a uh, very strong uh, positive north atlantic oscillation pattern that remains to be seen of course but uh, it is going to be interesting as we go towards the uh, you know week one and week two of March with regards to the overall setup here. Now, incidentally, this is the um, the CFS V2 forecast for the Northern Hemisphere for, for the month of March here. And you notice here that we do have a lot of reds uh, displaced up across higher latitudes. So we've got a very strong positive here over the North Atlantic uh, or should I say the North Pacific, we've also got a very strong ridge over Europe here. Now, yeah, you could look at that and go, positive NAO signal, very mild pattern. Yeah, I get that. However, there is also uh, some reason to, to believe that we could start to see these areas of, uh, of twin ridges start to kind of migrate northwards here. And, uh, you know, it could be a mild overall march. Uh, you know, I might be completely wrong, but it is interesting to see what the modeling is at least uh, suggesting. But I want to go on and show you the stratospheric situation at the moment as well, because there is modeling uh, coming and going with regards to the, the Madden Julian oscillation versus the stratosphere. Uh, a lot of complexities to the overall system at this moment in time. But uh, if you notice here, this is um, the. Uh, uh, I'm going to try and break this down here, folks, because this is the. Um, the setup here that we've got. So we've got, of course, the stratospheric polar vortex and the tropospheric polar vortex, two separate entities. Of course, you've got the uh, stratospheric polar vortex way up high within the atmosphere. We've got the lower tropospheric polar vortex underneath that now. Now, of course, when you see warming within the stratosphere, what you want is the connect, the coupling between the, the stratosphere and the troposphere, that is what tends to bring firmer high latitude blocking and colder patterns to North America, to, to Europe, to Eastern Asia here. What we've got is we've got a sudden, not necessarily a sudden stratospheric warming, but we have a strong warming within the stratosphere way up at 10 hpa at the moment and i want to show you uh, exactly what we've got so this is the the current setup at 10 hpa uh, as of now here so you've got um quite a cold strong vortex extending from the pole towards canada greenland iceland that is what essentially is driving the uh, firm positive north atlantic oscillation at this moment in time if we skip through to say the next few days at 10 hpa uh let's go to five days from now and look at the difference we've got a displacement of the polar vortex it's way out uh, over eurasia we've got a uh, firm warming between um between eastern portions of siberia across the top and in towards uh, hudson bay here which is quite interesting and then as we progress towards a uh, two-week period here which is quite interesting we've got um the, this uh, look here now we've got the the warming taking place uh, over eastern asia over alaska uh, and over greenland as well now if you were to look at that you would say to yourself does that mark not indicate a negative north atlantic oscillation not necessarily because of course if you look at the lower portion of the stratosphere at 50 hpa this is what it's currently looking 
So within the, 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 the lowest level of the stratosphere, you've still got a, a cold polar vortex here. Now, as we press through, and this is what's crucial in terms of that coupling, so the effect of the warming within the stratosphere into the troposphere, you would look at 50 HPA. And if you notice here, by the time we go out to day uh, five, you're starting to see warming taking place within the lower stratosphere here, which is quite interesting. Then as we go out to say 10 days from now, I know it's a long way off, but uh, you can see here the warming starting to push and migrate towards Hudson Bay, even arguably towards Greenland here. If we go to an even lower level within the atmosphere uh, to say 70 HPA at uh, 10 days from now, you've got a strong warming taking place uh, between um, Alaska and towards the Baffin Straits. Now this, folks, this has some sort of an indicator of possibly a reverse in the, the, the North Atlantic Oscillation. This here could suggest towards the end of the month, so the end of, of March, not two weeks from now, the end of March, we may start to see the, the North Atlantic Oscillation going negative. And that would indicate the potential for colder conditions in the March into the, the month of April here. I think we could have a fairly cold April, if I'm being honest, based on all this, that's going on. Very complex situation, I have to say, and it's going to be very interesting to see. March is going to be a very tough call in terms of exactly what type of weather pattern we get. Because the Manjulian Oscillation is in town again. It has is starting to reshape the upper earth pattern over the northern hemisphere. But we also throw in the, the equation, the stratosphere, the potential influence that may have. Do we get the coupling stratosphere into the troposphere? If we do, with a warming influence, we could see colder conditions, like I say, end of March into the April. Now, we could get episodes of cold even during the month of March, not influenced necessarily by the stratosphere or the troposphere, but more likely to be influenced by the Manjulian Oscillation progressing from the Indian Ocean into the West Pacific. I know it's a bit of a deep video today, but I want to try and show you exactly why I think something may happen in the next two, three, uh, four weeks' time. I know you're probably saying to yourself, well, Mark, you know, you're struggling to get maybe sometimes a week in advance. Right, I get that. But it's all about looking at the big picture, the drivers that are in place, and so on and so forth. I think we've still got a lot of interesting things to come. And I do encourage you to continue here on my channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you if you enjoy the video. And, of course, um, click the bell for the notifications of every upload here. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And hopefully I'll be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.